Welcome to Winternomics TV. Your stream will begin shortly. Welcome to Winternomics TV. Your stream will begin shortly. Welcome to Winternomics TV. Your stream will begin shortly.
Welcome to Winternomics TV. Your stream will begin shortly. Welcome to Winternomics TV. Your stream will begin shortly. Welcome to Winternomics TV. Your stream will begin shortly.
Welcome to Wintronomics TV. Your stream will begin shortly. Welcome to Wintronomics TV. Your stream will begin shortly. Welcome to Wintronomics TV. Your stream will begin shortly.
What up, what up? We are live. Last show of the year. What's up, everybody? This is the golden ticket. Yo, yo. Got Burger in the building, Director Vale in the building. How y'all doing? Hang on. Welcome to Wintronomics TV. Your stream will begin shortly. Just trying to get a camera sitch level. All right, there we go. What's good in the hood? BTCD, we could probably do that. Yeah, we create, we create the look and feel of, uh, of this thing. <laughs> last show of the year, last day of the year, New Year's Eve. And can y'all believe that? Was it me or is 2021 a lot faster than 2020? As crazy as 2020 was. Bro, it, we just finished 2019, like a couple weeks ago. How is it 2022 already? I feel like we've I feel like we've been in a suspended state of, since uh, 2020 uh, 2019. I feel like the last two years we got canceled, you know. Yeah, it's funny how time is going by the same for like everyone. It's like everyone's saying that this year went by so fast. They can't even believe it. Everyone has a perception that the time time is moving faster. It doesn't matter what age you are. It feels like like these last two years went by at a much crazier speed. While a lot more of what we could do is restricted at the same time. So I thought that was nuts and everyone feels it, you know, it's really wild. I saw one thing uh, from some neuroscientists saying that the way we form memories and the way we keep track of time is through interactions with other humans. Like those become our events that we base everything off of. And because we're not interacting with humans as often, like we don't have chances for our brain to even like set landmark events. That's a very, very fascinating thing to think about. Yeah, that, that makes total sense. Why everyone would have that same feeling then from the lack of interaction. Um, very fascinating. All right, let me see what they're saying in the chat. Who's running a poll? Me. Who else knows how to run a poll? <laughs> Backslash poll, enter. Yeah, what were these polls? Number one, predictive analyst. Predictive analyst trader. and risk management, risk manager slash trader are two completely different things. Um, I think that's a lot of reasons a lot of people who come to watch the show get caught up in like esoteric TA and lots of analysis styles and things like that outside of like learning habits that we talk about in the show because they, they conflate what I do on charts with like what you're supposed to be doing trading. Like, you know, what I do, I guess you could call it chart art, is nothing to do with trading. Like being a good risk manager has nothing to do with how well you can draw a bull flag on a chart at all. It just has to do with how well you can maintain discipline and manage risk over time. So never mix those things up, even though everybody always does. Nancy Pelosi, number one. Huh? Nancy Pelosi, number one trader. Right. You think Nancy Pelosi has ever, ever drawn a fucking, like, technical analysis chart? Be serious. Nancy's above that whole game. She goes to the source. Say, fuck your TA. <laughs> this is Nancy. Mm -hmm. If you can't be like Nancy, be like, be like Nami. <laughs> She's inside the charts. <laughs> Good old Nancy. Shout out to those some end of year bits, exploit, secrets in. Tiki, appreciate you guys. Introverts are wrecked indeed. She's inside the charts, right? So, how, th how thin is your show volume today? Because I'm guessing it'll be a little low today because it's the uh, end of year. I'm not guessing everyone will show up. We have a normal market day today and actually on Monday, which is the first time since 2010. It's pretty fascinating. 140. I see 145 now. All right. Not the absolute worst. Um, we're going to go over some things, you know, th some stuff we did play-wise, and uh, just take, a, take stock of the year, I guess. Nancy don't draw no bull flag. She is the bull flag. I like that. Leon, stop jinxing Nancy. 
I believe it is, right? We're closing at four today, isn't it? It's not one o'clock early close. It's four o'clock close today. Yeah, it's a normal market day. Well, banks are closed on Monday, right, Burger? I think they're closed today also. It's a bank holiday technically today. Okay. So I saw that it's the market's open, but it's not cash settled, which I don't really understand what that means. I got it. Shoot. Shizro said, I think that time perception depends on the type of activity you do. For instance, while traveling, your time is extended. Well, I mean, interactions and activity, kind of the same thing. You, you just need marker events that you just don't have much of. But human interaction, as Berger, I think, is saying, is, uh, is, is more um, important to that, uh, you know, landmarks. I think time goes by faster when I'm traveling because I'm having fun. Yeah, I, like when you're engaged in activities, right? People say time flies when you're having fun. I think, um, you know, your attention is taken away from paying attention to every moment. I think that's also different, though, than like life experiences and, and people interactions, you know. Each person in each setting, you know, I think is its own event. I think that I think that is the difference, you know, in saying that you've done a lot of things, is that you have a lot of different um, markers in time, which are marked through events and interaction. Yeah. Um, but I know when you're like with people and you're doing something, time goes by at Mach fucking five. You don't know what the hell happened to your day. <laughs> Jan said, I just had a vacation of 10 days, seemed like three. William Payne said, thanks for all the memos this year. I'm glad you dig them. Appreciate the bits, sir. To the three people who voted no, did you somewhat quarantine, do COVID precautions, or just live your life? I'd like to know the answer to that, huh? That's an interesting question. So did you guys see the um, the daily infections? Fucking 530,000 in a day? Yeah, <laughs> nuts. So like at that speed, right, the whole country has it by the end of next fucking week. Mm -hmm. um, actually fucking an insane number, right? Like it's not sort of beyond the infection rate of Delta. It's mind-blowingly past the infection rate of Delta. This is what we were worried about in the beginning when we didn't know what was going on. And luckily, this one's not as not as bad, and we have a vaccine for it. And you, all the antivirals are starting to get approved, at least under emergency use. Do you feel like the? It's probably something that we don't have the expertise to speak on, but do you feel that like the fact that this one is like this ultra level of fucking infectious, like way past anything ultra, seen, ultra, ultra, ultra infectious. that it could have been like this plus be totally deadly? Or do you think that it fucking kind of came in tandem? Because it's like, it's a, it's amazing that this mutation is the least deadly, but like fucking 10x, the, it's like a, what's it, r not 10? It's like the most infectious like level on fucking infectious as it gets. And had this one been as deadly as the earlier ones, the whole human race would be, in, you know, in jeopardy in a few months. So do you think that the the infectious level of it goes hand in hand with the fact that it's more benign? I mean, from what I know of historic viruses, it's what that's the trend that happens is they start off as a So it's, it's to the benefit of the virus to not kill everything so fast that it can get to fucking spread. So a highly infectious virus is likely not that deadly for that reason, because it's to the, the survivability of the virus. That's interesting. Yeah, the more you, your body can't tell it's there, the longer it can stay there. So it's, and um, Kinson just said, I think if it was uh, this deadly, people will actually try to stop and spread it and actually be scared. Um, I think that a lot of, um, something that I, I guess 
thought about was when we originally talked about this, about how the Spanish flu ended. It just became so deadly that you literally couldn't give it to someone else because so, uh, you would uh, die immediately. Right, so a very deadly virus is actually not good for the virus. So this is just the complete opposite of that. So uh, I'll end by everyone having it. Not that's what I'm saying. That's I'm thinking that like literally the more deadly is the less infectious, the less deadly is the more infectious, and that literally goes hand in hand. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I think, you know, I think we're at an interesting point. Uh, Luke's question, why was the Finnish flu even more deadly during the successive waves, contrary to the current one? So, I mean, we did see that with Delta. Delta was more infectious and more deadly than Alpha, Beta, and whatever, and the original one. Um, but we had the vaccine. Right. And the, the, the predictions on numbers of death if we didn't have the vaccine were like an extra million deaths in the oh, U.S. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. Um, a million deaths, too, fucking 100 years ago is fucking major. Mm-hmm. So, I'll tell you something interesting, guys, since we've been talking about this, too. This stuff's been coming out of everywhere. See, this, this is, uh, we posted this yesterday. And you look at this, um, these guys talking about, um, corona right now. And then I'm pretty much saying basically what we said, you know, about in a, over the last like uh, week and a half, two weeks, we've basically been sp- speaking on this, right? That it's an impossible, this, uh, this guy's saying it's, a, it's an R not 10, you would essentially need 100% vaccination to stop something like this. And there's, it's a logistic nightmare to get the whole population to get vaccinated close enough together to ever achieve that, let alone the anti-vax problem you have over yeah. here and stuff like that. that so this can't happen. So at the speed, this is going 500,000 infections in a day. And that's just here. We're not talking about any other parts of the world. You know, this is going to spread like crazy. We already know that. And then we said this, this exact same thing, right? It looks, it's going to look like more like a common flu. This, there's no stopping this. Everyone's going to get this thing. And there's also sheer exhaustion, right? People don't want to even try the fucking like protocols we were trying for like almost two years. And there's lots of disruption. We said this too. But this, uh, this article, more to the point, this article literally just fucking regurgitated everything we put out, like, on our show. Yeah, like, a couple days later. <laughs> like, literally every major point I said is in this fucking paragraph. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, your lives are disrupted too much. People just won't go back in the box. They, you know, no. you think fucking China went to the extent of, of, like, welding people into buildings and they couldn't stop it back then? There's there's nothing you can do now with the population the size it is and as many different protocols as being enacted in different sovereignties. It's just a disaster. And like the whole anti-vax thing, like being so out of control, like. Yeah, it's totally ridiculous. We would need to, to actually shut it down with the R of 10, you would need China style lockdowns everywhere. You'd have and to lock down the whole, not, whole you need a 14 day lockdown in the entire human population to stop it. Mm-hmm. Pretty much that. And it's never going to happen. <laughs> Pickle toast. Which one of you bitches works for MSNBC? Like, that's not sort of a straight port off of our show into his. It's like the entire show where I mentioned all those hot buttons. He put them all in one segment. It's pretty nuts. You guys in Discord have been seeing that quite a bit, right? Z3, Happy New Year, Kaz, Vicky, and everyone. Appreciate it. Happy New Year to you guys. <clears throat> For all of you that are reading tomorrow, like Seekinson, I guess it's, it's New Year's already over there, right? I think. Or no, I think you got four hours to go. Four hours. Four hours. If you're fucking some part of New Zealand, I think it's already New Year's. Fractal Big Money said your calls are way ahead of everyone, and I think. What was his name? Fractal Dick Money. Fractal Dick Money. Happy to have you here, sir. <laughs> um, it's, I think um, just looking at Black Order and seeing how we had a breakdown of how this entire thing would work, I think that was very helpful to a lot of people in the ecosystem, whereas everyone else kind of was like super misinformed and like didn't know the forward projection. Right. If you guys watched uh, Black Order, you guys had literally the, the entire playbook of how this whole thing would unfold all the way to the boosters. Yeah. You know, and that was back in uh, June of 2020. We, we did that show with Dr. D, myself, Henry, and, and Berger. And we literally laid out for the entire year what would unfold. And underneath that crazy wall of worry, you know, the market would still find its way higher. So I found a really cool chart that we're going to 
you know, why, oh, I moved the mic so far behind my leaning over here. So I found a really cool chart that I want to show you guys because we've been talking a lot about how um, the media is like programs a reality into the audience's minds. And that reality, like, you know, is itself as real as rea reality, real gets for a person because ideas are the most real thing to us, right? Not uh, things themselves, but the ideas that we have of things are the most real things. And we know that since thoughts precede actions, if I can inc influence your idea of a thing, I can effectively control what you're going to do and the reality I've built for you. And so this is really important to understand, like, you know, um, one of the cliches in the markets is that markets tend to climb a wall of worry, but no one's ever asked who the architect of that wall is. So I think it's a good, good thing to explore. What do you guys think? Right? Have you ever thought about that? Markets climb a wall of worry. Well, who built the wall? Isn't that the most logical question to ask? <laughs> it is. So do you guys want to see what the wall really looks like? It's an interactive show. You've got to answer stuff. <laughs> Do you want to see the wall? Do you want to see what the wall looks like? A physical representation? Build the wall. Build the wall. Build the wall. Let's be chump tards for a day. <laughs> no. <laughs> Let's never be chump tards for a day. Never do that. Um, 100%. All right. So I found a very, very cool article um, with a very crazy depiction in it. Did you know said drop the eggplant? Drop the eggplant. Who said that? The Junos. The Junos. Junos is banned for an hour. <laughs> what the hell, Junos? I, I can actually do that. I can actually do that. <laughs> you can actually ban for an hour? Time out, Junos. No. <laughs> what the hell? 10 seconds. I want to click the 10 second button. So, SPX 500. So, let's look at a year. It did. <laughs> ten seconds. Ten seconds, Judas. He's gonna get, he's gonna have a fucking heart attack right now. <laughs> Damn. Like, what? 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 Um. So here is our our market, right? This is our trend for here. You look at the S and P five hundred. You say, oh man, every technician in the world should be able to track the wave like this. But in the real time unfolding of the market, right? People can't think. Right. Every next minute. They've got reason to believe that this pullback is, oh, we're heading back down for COVID. Oh, we're heading back down for COVID, right? Um, it's a chart. Huh? I don't see the chart on my side, but that just might be me. Oh, I'm behind. You guys have a, you have a delay. We're just it's late. Up. It's up. It's up. It's up. Yeah, we're just late. Unless so, it's lagging. Right. Every pullback, the media is doing stuff to you that keeps you fucking freaking out about what the fuck is happening in all these spots. So every time it reemerges, everyone's traumatized, right? Even down to this last VIX correction. Mm -hmm. Last major pressure to the VIX here with Barnomics, right? It was October 5th. That's really just a bull flag along this trend that's happening. Then you get like, you know, a little bit of a stall out here we have, the market's kind of choking higher. But this is not like really ridiculous for any technician to fucking read. But here it is, this is so great. So this is called the Relentless 2021 News Cycle in One Chart. Google Trends for 2021 News Topics. This is such a fantastic way to look at what the MSN actually is up to uh, when it comes to creating the perception arbitrage that allows them to extract equity from the human capital, that's us. Look at this. So this is down here, January 2021 to December, the year in the market. Here is the rolling breaking news story they kept your minds tied to for a calendar year as the market pumped. These are, this is literally how Black Lives Matter disappeared or you got shifted onto fucking Myanmar, or you're watching Tom Brady. You look at this, and the media basically has a rolling news cycle that keeps your minds occupied. GameStop, Myanmar, Brady, Texas snowstorm, you see it? And so your peak in Google Trends is the peak attention of the audience. The whole planet's basically like locked into these small ideas and being moved in a systematic tide to keep the peak uh, ratings of the stations in a rolling fashion all the way through. And this is the this is the wall of worry. This is literally it. This thing is directly, you know, diametrically opposed to your ability to participate in that. Yeah. From so you see how crazy this is? So that's that that chart goes from um right here, January, uh here, right? So it's from here to here. So my bad. 
right? So that entire trend structure is literally on the backside of this fucking wave through. You're mind fucked the whole way. Belarus, inflation, fucking India's COVID variant. Remember, that one got real big because people are real fucking scared. You come down here, what's his borders? So people are just persistently fucking freaking about, you know, Mexico. Britney's fucking spears, bitch. Really? Yeah. Get the fuck out of here, Britney. Free Britney. Like free Britney. Britney. Britney was fighting for attention. Look, Britney was fighting for attention back here. They're like, fuck it, we'll bring that bitch back when the fucking market dies down. Britney's back with a hell of a timing here. Pretty funny, right? Yeah. Where's Rush Limbaugh? I don't see it. Uh, Mars and Ted Cruz. Uh, Mars and Ted Cruz? <laughs> Jeez. Mars? There's always something going uh, on. Let's see, that's, a, that's an image, my bad. Okay. At every single uh, moment, there's always time, something going on. Yo, I can't see my pointer. Oh, the Jeff Bezos. Look, this is Bezos. Must be his love affair or whatever. Abortions, debacle. I'm fucking still not seeing the Mars. Mars, okay, right. Mars. Rush Limbaugh. He got swallowed up by Mars. <laughs> And who's behind him? Dr. fucking Seuss? What was Dr. Seuss's deal? Was he racist? What happened here? I don't know. Oh, they got rid of his racist old books. Oh, uh, Dr. Seuss, Seuss books. Like, They're canceling Dr. Seuss. So have you ever seen some shit like this, guys? Like, think about this, right? That is the, the uh, perception arbitrage. You're constantly being rolled into another thing to be terrified about. And fucking, it feels like the world's coming part of the scenes because they're making a business out of mind fucking your asses. Like, no Vaseline, just fucking in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out, over and over and over, right? And as much as you'll fucking take it. If you keep watching this shit, it's literally fucking, literally wrecking your mind. You ever heard that shit that TV rots your brain? That's literally a graph of it. It's fucking crazy. Um, yeah, I thought that was a really visually stunning way to show how everyone can be so preoccupied that they can't fucking keep their eyes on the fucking ball, you know? You look at this and you're like, oh man, this is a, a simple uptrend. Every technician should be able to pay attention. But the thing you don't remember, you know, when you go back to like this day, this specific day, is the way that you feel, not just from what you've watched, but from what every single person around you has watched that is interacting with you and imparting pieces of their belief structure into your world. Right? We're like, we're a herd animal, like birds, you know, we, we flock together, you, you are imparting emotion and information onto everyone you're around. If everyone around you is inundated with this shit all the time, this is literally what the fucking lemmings are talking about, right? At the water cooler. So no one can fucking think. And that's why we tell you here, if you can't stop out on all the other stupid motherfuckers who are sucked into this every day and who give a shit about fucking what Cuomo is doing or talk about the next news story when the next news story is on TV and their minds change when the news story comes off TV, you're going to move and talk like those same morons as well, right? Any of your friends who fucking were all in Black Lives Matter, then when it came off the TV, fucking switched over to fucking, you know, Kylie Jenner and switched over to Travis Scott and switched over to fucking Liz Cheney and switched over to inflation with the news cycle, pay attention to that shit. You know, if you can't tell it's happening, you're the dummy too. And here, we stay fucking away from this shit. We know how to look at this without being part of this. So you've got to fucking really be able to, like, you know, extricate yourself from this fucking machine because it really, you know, 90% of the fucking crowd is fucking a slave to this shit. They don't have their own ideas. They're not pissed off about inflation for any other reason that's on TV today. They don't give a fuck three weeks later when it's gone. You guys said? Oh, I mean, yeah, my my grandparent was literally talking about how his stocks were down while it was hitting all-time highs just because he watches Fox News and he doesn't actually check his shit. Let's think about this. Her 94-year-old gran uh, grandfather was pissed off that the stock market was getting killed under Biden. While at the same week that it literally hit an all-time high. It's literally high. at all-time highs the minute he's saying that. Hey, I trader... Had a conversation tra with my grandma about that, too. She was like, yeah, my, mark my account hasn't moved at all. Like, right, Trader Hose 420 said, I heard my grandfather say that as well. The reality is your 90-year-old grandfather isn't really logging into his fucking, like, you know, I, uh, IB every day to check his portfolio. He might have looked at that bitch fucking a year ago. He's just going by the television. The television said so. Yeah, I think so. Uh, Trader Hose 420 said... Uh, said his retirement didn't go up while Obama was president. Think about that. Right, think about that. The Eight the, years of a bull market. The stock market bounced in total $23 trillion in market cap under Obama's two terms. $23 fucking trillion. So, 
this is perception arbitrage, right? People fucking think the country's like literally on fucking fire. All the time. All these news stories are constant Armageddon, constant fucking, oh my God, the markets, constant, you know, CNBC pictures of people on the floor, like holding their heads. Yeah, you know, think about when we talk about all those, uh, all those, um, clip arts of the guy, the, the freaked out emotional white guy in the pit of, um, the New York Stock Exchange they give you all the time, right? If you look up stuff like this, you know, you'll find crazy shit all the way up, right? Biden's economic ratings are worse than Carter's. Think about that. Biden's economic ratings are worse than Jimmy Carter? <laughs> At the top, this is December 21st, this came out, right? Where'd that come out? The whole holiday table was considered white man faces. It was a considered white guy face. So, like, look, let's see. Pull back wise, 21st. Yeah, they put that new story out somewhere in here. Somewhere in the 21st in here. Let's give them that for the, the time. Let's see what the timestamp is. Uh, 8.01 a.m. This is a morning. Okay, let's move that to where it's actually at. 8.01 a.m. Come on, you cocksuckers. Don't disappoint me. Yeah, they don't disappoint. That's where they are. Biden's worse than fucking Carter. Boom! <laughs> <laughs> it's the craziest shit. You know, like, if you watch what they're doing, these people are trying to help you. And you know what the fact of it is? Let's look at something here. So he ends uh, January, so January 20, uh, 1977 to 1981. Let's find by, let's find Jimmy, let's just see what Jimmy Carter's, because we've never heard a good thing about Jimmy Carter in our fucking lives, right? So 1977, January, uh, I want the whole chart. Let's get, um, SP. January 20th, 70. Kind of interesting video I want to show after this. Okay. Why does this game look so terrible? Let me get the other one. That's Jimmy Carter's presidency right there. So when Jimmy Carter is being railed as the shittiest fucking president you've ever heard of, the market is finishing at all-time highs under him and dumps under Reagan. That's where, that's where Carter's at. You've never heard a good word about Carter either, have you? But the reality is, stagflation bottomed in his presidency and the market broke out to new all-time highs under Carter. They've managed to smear every single Democrat while every single Democrat has literally led you out of the trench a Republican led you into for 50 fucking years. Think about this. Look at this. It's actually crazy when you look at it, right? The market took a fucking fat shit in Reagan's first time, uh, two years in office, and then he fucking like, uh, what, raised the debt ceiling like 18 fucking times? He blew the national debt to the fucking ceiling with Star Wars. And inflated the entire economic system. Under Reagan, the dollar fucking crashes. You know, some insane percentage. If you look at uh, Reagan's dollar, nobody even talks about this shit. Where is uh index? Is that you, you already have it on the chart? Huh? You already have that his Reagan dollar on the chart? I did? No, it, there was something. I think I don't know who it was. It might have been Bush. Yeah, this was this is Reagan. 
in the back half while he's blowing the national debt out. Yeah, your stock market's running, but he blows the world reserve currency apart 50 fucking percent in the back half. So he crashes the stock market in the front two years when he manages to pump the fucking uh, risk asset base by inflating the money supply out of the fucking ceiling. He destroys the currency on the back end. Reaganomics is not fucking half of what people pitch it as. It's, it's actually fucking crazy. So, pretty nuts, right? Um, but yeah, so the, the, what the, what the, what the uh, MSM can do to your psychology is pretty fucking bonkers. But yeah, Jimmy Carter's presidency is actually a great time to have invested in the stock market. And he gets no credit for that being anything, you know? But I thought this was a pretty mind-blowing chart to find. I was like, this is fucking crazy. To see, basically, that they've got a system. You know, as soon as peak interest is hit, they're rolling you into the next story. You can actually see here where this is peaking, and these stories are catching fucking steam. And as they die, the next one's catching steam. So this is literally their business model of keeping or attention on the screen for every next subject of horseshit. And the fact is, we're being so inundated so well. You have to think about it, too, right? If MSNBC is talking about something, Fox News is talking about the conservative version of the same thing simultaneously, and they're rolling between the stories together. So they're not really reporting different things. They're both reporting the same thing from two different perceptions and fucking splitting the population and then moving you through subject matter. It's like literally you're not in control of what you think you think you know. Um, it's, it's really bonkers. But they'll be covering both stories from both sides all the time, and they'll switch together. So, it doesn't matter what the information is actually saying, or like they're just trying to keep you scared the whole time. Right, they're keeping you fucking completely fucking scared, and it's definitely cooperative. It's not accidental. If you remember, it was it Tucker Carlson um has some messages that showed he's actually a good friend with one of the guys over at MSNBC, and that was also true of like Keith Oberman. Keith Oberman was really good friends with Sean Hannity off air, and that came out on um uh, that guy's talk show on HBO. But you know they look like they were trying to kill each other from each network on the shows. But they're actually boys off air. Like, it's not sort of accidental that the whole crowd is losing out to watching these massive fucking media stations that provide you really no actionable intel in any meaningful time frame. Mm-hmm. CBC is not a different version of this, right? CBC has you freaking out about every next political, fu- uh, political move that Biden makes. And they did the same thing with Obama. They were clearly conservative leaning, you know. Um, what's her face, uh, Maria Bartiromo, she jumped over to Fox News Business to start covering just conservative versions of, like, you know, Market information. Not that it wasn't bad enough on CNBC, but now it's just purely bullshit. Um, but so they, they kept the tilt on Obama, kept people sidelined his whole presidency. And this is how they do it. Your thoughts are not your own. If you find that your friends, your family, and this is really important. Do you find that your friends and family were talking about each of these at the times that they were hot, or many of these at the times they were hot in the media at these time frames? Your family, that person or your friend, whoever it is, they're a fucking chipmunk. Yep. You keep hanging out with a fucking chipmunk, you're a fucking chipmunk. They kind of keep, like, a moving target for everyone to keep their focus on instead of, like, actually looking around. You hear people emotionally hotly debate these subjects like they fucking always gave a shit. They're talking about Alec Baldwin now and fucking Bill Back there and Tornadoes, and they're fucking all into it. You see that shit, you run. That motherfucker's a turnip. So, memos on memos. Memos on memos. Yeah, Crazy memos shit, right? Yeah, just, yeah, yeah. What happened? It's just, like, it's just New Gingrich. Um, oh, yeah, I figured out how to send it from you. Oh, you sent it to me on, uh... Discord. Discord, yeah. Can you, uh, oh, well, that's something I should play on the show? Yeah, yeah. Can you DM it to, uh, Win and I? Yeah. yeah. Let's see here if uh, audio comes through. I think it does. Guys, let me know if there's no audio when I try to play this. I gotta mute us, I think. The economy not is ticking up. Big, it is not down in the biggest cities. Violent crime murder rate is down. Then it how come, is then down. Then how come it's up in Chicago, up in Baltimore, and there up in Washington? There are pockets where cer- certainly we your have nas- not tackled Your national murder capital, your third, your, your third biggest city. But violent crime across the country is down. The average American, I will bet you this morning, does not think crime is down, does not think they are safer. 
But it is, we are safer, and it is now. No, that's your view. Yeah, I, just, I just told now. I, 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 but what I said, but what I said is also, no, what I said is also a fact. Current view is that liberals have a whole set of statistics which theoretically may be right, but it's not where human beings are. But what you're saying yeah, is, but, but, uh, but hold on, uh, uh, Mr. Speaker, because you're saying liberals use these numbers, they use this sort of sure. magic math. This is uh, the FBI statistics. They're not a liberal organization. No, They're but what I said is equally true. People feel, feel it. more threatened. Yes, they feel it, but the facts don't support Fine. it. As a, as a political ca candidate, I'll go with how people feel, and I'll let you go with the theoreticians. We're going to watch that shit a fucking again, because yeah. that's literally the most insane fucking load of shit. Hold on. What just happened? I don't want to see that shit. I waited too long. <laughs> God damn it. How did I stop this? <laughs> Violent crime is down. The economy is really, I feel like it's... And this is the power they have, right? What you believe. You ever, you remember I posted that thing that says, uh, belief is the death of intelligence? This is it. They can make you believe something that's completely not real, and if thoughts precede actions, guess what that can make you do? Anything they want you to, right? So this is the mechanics of, like, what they do to your psychology and how they do it. Like, Newt Gingrich is a, is a master at planting fucking seeds of doubt, right? He's the guy who told, uh, where is it? I have, a, I have a thing for him. Hang on, let me find this. Well, it's like that Instagram post you've had before about, um, like, what's more real, empirical reality or feelings? And I think your initial thing in your philosophy class was that empiricism is all that real. But, like, it's literally all that matters is how people feel about something. All right, and so... We look at this, this is on my blog. This is a, a great thing about cognitive dissonance, right? Sometimes people hold a core belief, right? The things they feel that is very strong. And when they're presented with evidence that work against that belief, like fucking uh, statistics and shit, like numbers, uh, the new evidence cannot be accepted. It would create a feeling that is extremely uncomfortable called cognitive dissonance. And because it is so important to protect the core belief, they will rationalize and ignore and even deny anything that doesn't fit within the core belief. These are trump tarts, right? Science doesn't matter. I don't care if you've been studying vaccines for fucking 40 years. Fucking, I just sat on the toilet and I Googled something and fuck you, right? That's cognitive dissonance at play. And that's also true when the stock market's pumping and people are like, my stocks aren't going up under Obama because that fucking guy sucks, All right? They play on this and they cook your fucking mind, you know? We showed you things like this. How do you always have the white guy in a suit that has capable of lying to you? Well, if the people in the media that are pretty much white guys control your image of white guys, right? Their killers are fucking beautiful people. You've never seen any of us presented as beautiful people for slaughtering a bunch of fucking people, have you? And every fucking white guy that's going to fucking shoot you in a crowd, he's the only one that's fucking crazy. All the rest are normal, even though every single country has a white guy shooting your ass in it, right? They're mind-fucking you. And so thoughts precede actions. You're being mindfucked into listening to a specific messenger that is going to lie to your ass and put you in a fucking place that you can be fucking raped. And this is what this whole article is about. This whole article shows you how you cook one idea globally until nobody can see anything or hear anything from anything but a specific messenger. You look at this stuff, right? This is what we showed you about Obama. When Obama got elected, that guy Newt Gingrich said this. This quote right here, what if Obama is so outside our comprehension that only if you understand Kenyan anti-colonial behavior can you begin to piece together his actions? This is the most accurate predictive model for his behavior. What do you think this does to fucking the conservative base of America's belief to invest in Obama? Guns go fucking ballistic because he's going to take guns away. Every possible bad thing he's going to do, right? It's time to take our country back. Back from who? So this market pump of fear to buy guns is literally the market pump of the stock market itself under Obama. Wow. Um, Fractal Big Money just said, reminds me of a recent petition for the handsome white criminal this year. And that message got like auto mod. If you read yeah, it. the auto mod. Because he said white criminal. <clears throat> In the message, that was like... The, right, so no, what, white, white people aren't criminals. Yeah, and fucking is, Twitch will even stop you from posting Let me that. see, let me see. Well, we know on Twitch, because, like, one of the biggest streamers on the platform got you know, banned for what you're saying, and you can't call white people the C-word, so white people are protected class. 
It's crazy. But so just seeing what the media can do through repetition, can cook ideas into your mind, can make things more real. The point of it is to realize that they can literally do this with anything, you know? So in here, I'm showing you how one idea allowed for the wall of worry of Obama's presidency, right? This is Obama's presidency right here. An Obama's presidency literally pumps on the back of a wall of worry, which is much like, you know, this. They have an Obama wall of worry they build through the entire presidency, which keeps you fucking paranoid of every action he's taking. And that sidelines the bulk of the population so that most people are on the, on the wrong side of this thing. This is a nuts video, though. Holy fuck. <laughs> yeah. Uh, wow. I thought that was pretty crazy. Uh, they're getting automated and everything, huh? <laughs> you guys stop that. <laughs> yes. We're getting in trouble. We're getting in trouble. Stop lighting up my fucking show with weird shit. I'm just going to deny. Huh? I love it. Whatever. Just text. <laughs> All banned. Everyone's banned by Twitch themselves. Not even me. All of those were held. So, yeah. yeah. All of them were held. All of the last no, ones that you guys put. Orange level. Not brown, not black. Pretty funny. All right, stop lighting my fucking chat up for fucking flaggable items. <laughs> uh, that's pretty funny. So you got to be careful about that. What got here, Yadav said he's a first time chat. Politics, one group of morons who think smarter than other group of morons. Uh, that is a bias that will hide the real reality of the fact that the only people that listen to those morons are even dumber motherfuckers. Yeah. So the population of people those politicians control are the actual idiot. That right there is exactly why people understand central banks, because they think the person in power is somehow dumber than them. Person in power is never dumber than you, bro. That is literally the fucking thing you don't want to think right there. Right? People constantly trying to fucking, like, you know, insult the bankers. Fucking Powell, you piece of shit. Look, that guy can fucking change something as often as five seconds that will fucking change the lifespan of your fucking family. Literally, you, like, uh, a healthy dose of respect for what the fucking positions people hold and the fact that they fucking make a business out of arbitraging your perceptions that they create. I don't think that's a dumb person. Gingrich is clearly telling you fucking he's smarter than you right there in that video clip. So the first thing you don't want to do is label people who fucking literally create your life path that you have no power over as being dumber than you. Yeah. yeah, we talked about Gingrich this. may be a demon, but he's not a dumb, dumb demon. Yeah, Gingrich is probably the definition of evil and lying piece of shit, but he ain't dumb. <laughs> you know, that's the fucking truth of it. We he talked ain't... about this this morning with people calling Nancy Pelosi all kinds of names and stuff like that, and she's obviously making fucking all this money on insider trading. She's obviously smart. Right, fucking like, exactly. Nancy Pelosi, you call her whatever you want. That bitch fucking is making over $10 million of fucking trade in her 80s. That bitch is the smartest trader in the fucking room. <laughs> so, fuck that. And she hasn't pulled up trading view once to figure out what she's buying. Give her some Just credit. Her smart enough to get into the place where she'd get the info before everyone else. Credit where credit is due. So, for newbies to the show... Um, I want you guys to check a look at something Burger put together for y'all uh, two months ago. I just want to reiterate this. Um, Burger put up a newbie's guide to getting started over here. Now, if you're going to post this on every platform, I think this is important. Oh, yeah, I added more shit to it, too. Right, I know you edited it. So um, this is really, really good for everybody who's coming in the door doesn't know where the fuck to begin. There's so much info on this show. This guy's in the fucking multicolored load of bullshit. Is this useful? So... If you're serious about like trying to change your change your game, walking in here, start to have a business plan, not be a victim of MSM, um, start learning how to think for yourself, make decisions, make plans, adjust your plans, record what you're doing, improve upon it, all that. Um, we pretty much have a public you know trading uh, plan for you that you can follow just with your own time. So, newbie guide to getting started from a guy who just did it. This is a uh, burger's brother actually. Uh, wrote his, you know, uh, walking in the door to this and what he did to get started. And it's a really, really great guide. And all the main resources that will pretty much get you off your ass to where you're functional and start to, you know, be in a place where you can start making choices and probably be fucking ahead of 90% of the game. Um, all these things he put, these are key links to things that will help you out. OnlyFans planning, one, two, three, and four. We'll pretty much walk you through everything you need from raw basics down to fucking how to put levels and structure out a plan on a bull flag, make entries, uh, you know, decide on risk management, decide on how to fucking like, you know, allow a play to progress, 
and figure out how to manage it along the progression, how to record data to do something to adjust your plans and along with your typical fucking um, results are. Uh, these videos down bottom will give you all the basics you need on uh, psychology, wave logics, um, sentiment reading, and a, a multitude of other things and concepts that we employ. If you go through these guys, I go through the bottom videos first, these guys down here first, and then go to um, OnlyFans and go to one and two, I would re-watch all of these down here more than one time. You will never absorb what's in any one of them all in one shot. Same thing for these videos. Watch one and two together and re-watch them before you go to three and four. If you spend a little break doing this, go over these guys, go over these guys. Don't do them all in one fucking day. That's like watching Lord of the Rings like fucking twice. Like, you know, pace yourself. Do this and then go to the blogs and read some of the stuff I wrote back there. You'll be, a, you'll be ahead of any fucking trade mentor in Twitter, period. You'll be ahead of any fucking training program or anything out there with just this shit right here. And then look at the examples of plays that we put in OnlyFans, like the ES cheat sheet that went off and took us to all-time highs. Look at the planning for that, and look at the thought and logic that you see in lots of the other stuff, and it's going to start to make a hell of kind of sense to you. So this is really, like, pretty much a perfect, like, starter pack for anybody that wants to figure out how the fuck to make your own choices out here and not be a victim of people creating ideas in your head, how to look at information and think about it differently than the average person does. So there's Smoj J in chat. Um, point three for my fellow newbies, approach your content consumption like you approach your trading. Plan ahead with intent. That's very well said. So I think this is really good. So for anybody who's new who doesn't know where to get started, go to Reddit and go to our page over here and look at the pinned uh, perspective post. This one was made by Burger for all of you to help you get started. All right, that was a lot. So let me go ahead and jump to Can scorecard. scorecard? No. Burger, you have anything you want to add to that? To my scorecard? No, to just uh, newbie stuff. No. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, oh, this is your scorecard. No shit. Uh, a lot of R's, a lesson on getting cocky. Very happy with this play, though I got cocky with my early quick flip, which had me trying to flip short and long multiple times in the top right corner. Thanks for the OF chart cast, got to add a bit of extra in the middle. Take your time, don't try to flip short as soon as you close your long, and if you're fucking up, know when to take a step back before you give it all back. Hugely important lesson on that last line there. Have a threshold of how much you can fuck up. 8 R's, 3 R's, 44 R's, 6 R's, minus 3 R's, total of 58 R's. And that's literally the reason you define your R, right? Because this is really what it's about. You wouldn't, you know, if you never missed, you wouldn't really care about what you risk. But since your entire trading career is going to be built on how many, uh, how much gains you have above your losses, this is a very systematic approach to understanding like what you're trying to do. You're trying to just win more than you lose, right? So if you lose one R on a trade, you could lose five in a row. An eight R trade will pay for it. And a 44 R trade will pay for 44 mistakes. So this is literally a business, you know, what you're running. And this is a very good representation of what you do in any business, right? You try to fucking risk less than you were going to make on your returns. And if uh, you happen to lose, you try to make uh, not too many consecutive losing decisions that will allow you to have a successful business over time. So, very good. Thanks for always giving such good uh, annotations and details, Burger, for everyone to learn from. Cool. Very, very good shit. I like that. Um, end of year scorecard. I like it. Oh, damn. Somebody even got my fucking outfit on this bitch. Check that out. Look, wow. at, look at that scorecard. That's hot. Mad baby. <clears throat> My mom just said, I want to be like Burger when I grow up. <laughs> <laughs> this is dope. I like this one. Uh, what did I just do here? Matt, Matt is a man of few words. He just look at my work, bitch. CL, 29 R's. Nice oil play. Why is this so gigantic? I can't fucking fit it on the screen. Oh. NVIDIA. Beast mode rotation, 14 hours, Cisco. These are fucking awesome charts. I love the way you did this. Very nice. Very nice. DVN. This looks hot. The little Santa Claus. The little Santa, Santa Claus, Miami. Microsoft, yep. I like the little kids writing down Cisco. That's 
That is. It's very festive. I agree. Winter Soldier OG, he's from before Winter Soldier. He's 2016 vet. He's been here. This is going into year six for Matt. Year five for Burger. What year? You, you, you came in 2017. This is your fifth year come summer. Yeah, yeah. Crazy yeah, shit, right? Fourth year anniversary. Come We got people here half decade anniversaries. That's pretty fucking dope. I think Matt came to us in March of 2016. If I'm not mistaken. Somewhere around there. So he's almost at year six right now. So... Career traders, right, around uh, the most accurate intel in the world. And that's what we hope for you guys, right? Your goal is not to be analysts. It's to be good risk managers. And from the position of a behavioral specialist, I teach you guys the behaviors that put you in the wrong places on these graphs and how to look at these things mechanically. But understand the difference between being an analyst and being a risk manager, right, where it's not the same thing. Um, so this is very cool. I really like this. And a good assortment of colors. No orange. See how beautiful... <laughs> see how... Aesthetically pleasing this is without orange involved. You can see that, right? It's you. you I know you guys feel it too. Missing a little bit. What? Look, missing a little bit of warmth with the orange. Nobody wants that shit. <laughs> it's, a, it's a cold world, motherfucker. It's a cold world. All right, so we're gonna, um, I guess, take a look at some markets uh, reviews here. The um, market's still a normal day. What's up? Refresh the page. There's one more support zone. Is there? Mm-hmm. Y'all be setting me up for failure. <laughs> Oh, there's two more. You guys be sticking them in while the show's going on. I know you ain't watch shit if you're making this, but all right, let's see what you got. Jenny's a bearable bear. What do you got? Final six score. Six minutes ago, literally. Six minutes ago. You rushed to get this. You missed the whole show trying to get this thing in. Um, that's a dope graphic. Thank you, guys. Vicky Eco Mentors and Team Shield. All of you made my year. Uh, 10 hours, 10 hours, Cosmos, very nice, very cool chart, I like it, I love how everyone's got graphics in the back of their stuff now, um, it was a challenging, to, it was challenging to make time and space to be able to fully focus on life opportunity that is present on Cosmos.com and Winter House TV, in 2021, I did it with help of my MM, thank you for your support, dear, and Team Shield bros, thank you guys for your cooperation. Most 99% of my awake time, didn't sleep much this year though, uh, did watch and listen to Kaz teaching us and recalibrating our lens to see the human behavior fighting our own conditioning and biases. And we know, we know price are human. Price is people is the actual quote, but I'll take it. In the ecosystem of 22 months studying emotions and logic, when applying 1% of it, it became another dimension, especially after Nebula 4 experience. It is awesome to discover how deep it is, is the rabbit hole. Digging now to 2022 with constructive habits based around Monday, Wednesday, and Friday streams, 2 p.m. Paris time, and not an exception, on December 31st, <laughs> the golden ticket stream. Pretty cool. Yeah, we don't miss a beat. We keep it pushing. Thanks for posting this, Bearable. Uh, I'm glad you had a, a good year of growth, man. I look to see what you do next year. I think you're getting the same before the end of the year. Um, Luke. 23, remember new guys in the side of Discord and on the channel. Since it's a holiday and it's live traffic, I'll keep my word count short. The past few shows and content that Kaz has been providing has been informative, taking a lot at different aspects of market beyond what is on the charts. Focusing on psychology and perception, then navigating us through crazy VIX spikes uh, this month, which gave me a better understanding of making plans with the VIX in mind and using key levels given. Still a work in progress. I'm still working on it to refine skills and trying to keep those bad habits from creeping back up as they tend to do once in a while. Concept, ideas, and information all need to be reinforced often, as Kaz mentioned, so as to avoid falling into the drift. Reps, reps, reps. Thank you, Kaz and Vicky, for your efforts in producing such quality shows and putting out useful content. This is, there is not a single thing that has been put out by the weatherman at any platform that is a waste of time. Every place has valuable info. Very, very true. Appreciate you, man. Thanks for writing that up. I'm glad you dig it. This is, can't tell what this is, Tesla. Nice breakout on Tesla, 1020. Very nice, very nice. Very nice. Um, I can't see that guy, Pfizer, four R's. Look at that. Breakout on the box range, very top, yeah. right to the Nebo flag, very nice. This is exactly what we wanna see. Look at that, dot. Really good stuff, right? Really simplistic, good shit, man. Keep it pushing. So I dig it. Um, where are we at here? T2, Knox Master. Oh, 
All right, let's see. Spy. Let's do our, our macro. We're at nine o'clock. We're not in a rush today. Today's kind of a slow day for us. So, you know, we're not rushing to do anything. You guys, it's the last day of the year. Don't get crazy. Um, for anybody who's to check out and get, wants to go fucking, you know, strangle yourself in a closet, um, do what you gotta do. So, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. Um, so, still watch this bull flag, end of the year volume thing. Big dump on the close yesterday. I wasn't sure if that was anything specific or just, you know, big fat finger to exit something as close to the end of the year as possible for someone. But we're still in the range of this bull flag. We're through it right now, pre market on the lows. So, might make a bigger bull structure. We did break high ever so slightly. And we've come back, so we really haven't gone anywhere, and we're just kind of in a bad place to get real meaningful conviction, you know, with the last two days of the year's trading. Um, QQQs made the same pattern. We talked about this also in the previous show. Bull flag, we tried to rotate, and we're still in the range of it, so it just hasn't managed to fully rotate it. So, all in all, we're keeping an eye on Supreme Being, right? We want to see this level sustained until we get back to normal volumes and the market's fully open. Um, so, I think we're kind of just going to wait and see to the end of the year. So, as far as macro goes today, you know, here, this looks like we're going to get our actual interaction we expect in the Dow. Dow hit high trigger. We should get a counter structure. There it is right there, right? This guy is literally right there. So we're going to see, you know, what comes of this. And we can track this pullback right now. Find the Dow. Where did, uh, where did the stupid color panel go? You ever notice that thing that like, goes over the chart and now I like, want to like use it to change the color of the shit and I can't find it? Oh, there it is. Oh, it's disappeared. It's always moving around. It's, so, it's so fucking possessed, bro. So that seems nothing really changed about what we talked about in the last two shows there. DXY things, we back up a little bit. He's still in the range we talked about, so we're going to just watch into next year with that. Nothing major changed there. VIX things. VIX had a little pump. We told you guys to pay attention to getting into this range by this support level, that's an extension from this level way back over here, and possibly to pay attention to VIX. He didn't get down too deep into it. I thought he might contact it, but a little bounce out of here now, and a little fade. So this might not be anything. He hasn't really broken this high. He might fade back into it again, yet again. This may take, this may happen today, or it may take till the, you know, we come back trading on Monday to see it do whatever it's gonna do. Um, but inside Supreme being under it, markets above it, we're looking for continuation. Um, all at these levels continue to hold. And we're keeping this level in mind once you make first contact because a humongous move did originate from this level. Uh, so that's VIX things. Crypto things. Squeeze crypto in here. Uh, some things to talk about. Well, you know, Tesla. Uh, he's not on this graph. Talked about Elon being done selling and paying attention to his nonsense, which generated this humongous recoil. Um, and right now, look, like, you know, there's a lot of things that still look in good, you know, condition to go higher. We just had to get out of the end of the year. Apple's still going to be on this rotation. He's just a stone throw off his highs. Um, AMD, AMD and some of these guys put in crazy highs. Now that the Omicron situation, you know, well, is widely getting regarded as like not, you know, becoming the next common cold. It's probably time to pay attention to everyone who's truly been fucking smacked over the fucking head, um, you know, from the public not being able to participate fully and the businesses that benefit from that. So last year we talked about um, Zoom CCL, right? Zoom CCL. So not this graph. I think it's on this one. Zoom. Did I do CCL Zoom? How did I do it? Yeah, it was this one. Right. Remember we talked about this last year? This is where we put it on the show. Come on. Yo. So ridiculous. So over here, right, when we were in March, we brought up Zoom CCL and we're like, you know, you're gonna have um, your guys who are like your antisocial versus socials, right? Zoom was the way to do business and hide from getting the disease. But once, you know, we started to evolve through this, the crowd going back out publicly, Zoom loses attraction on that virtual market space. So we look at this now and you look at this, this is the entire pandemic wave of going into, into crisis and fearing the situation and withdrawing from public and going to virtual. And once the market, you know, found, found a, a talk to that, the reversal from October really has been us going back and protocols breaking down and, you know, uh, non-congruity between municipalities and, and mandates 
and whatnot. And so the crowd is just going back further and further and further. And with this graph, it captures the reality that that trend's not stopping, right? With Omicron now, Zoom loses further traction and CCL and recreational um, players uh, that require populations to come out are probably in a better place. This likely means that Kathy Woods is not so fucking right about what she's doing on this because Kathy's been buying this thing from 535 straight down into the grave. And Zoom looks like fucking shit. That being said, why do you bring it up? Because Pelosi bought fucking Disney. And Disney is like, you know, the ultimate barometer of the public. Um, Disney is in a pretty interesting place. As far as bull flags go, this gets pretty interesting, right? So I think Pelosi, I put her against Kathy Big Penis, and I'm going to go Disney Zoom, and I think fucking Pelosi is the smarter fucking money. All right? She's betting on Omicron being dead to buy Disney. And so that means guys like Simon Property Group who control all the malls, those guys should look good too. And they do, right? Simon Property Group controls all the malls of America. So foot traffic. That means retail, right? Retail should look good. Some pullbacks that look good. Macy's looks pretty interesting, right? To key levels. And we know Macy's structurally is in some shit like this. So, it, you know, if Kathy's, uh, Kathy's betting on fucking basically more virtual, then you're betting on things like Teladoc, which would really only flourish again if the whole crowd had to hide again. But Teladoc is literally fucking dead and dying. And if there's anything that looks shortable, it'd be a motherfucker like this, right? So that doesn't look good at all. It looks like this is telling us that Omicron is really the last iteration we give a shit about. So I think this is some good stuff to cover for us to kind of get our heads on a macro going into next year. If we're right and Omicron is the fucking end of it, it's about to be the common cold, then the fucking, the assets that truly, truly fucking suffered from the fucking like inability for us to all have normal life are, should be on the front of your radar. Airlines are like, honestly, the shittiest fucking industry there is, right? Airlines just don't make fucking money. But airlines themselves would be indicative of that cycle. And I look at airlines on fucking Zoom, and even airlines, the shittiest fucking industry in the industrials, look strong on fucking Zoom. This likely tells you as a basket, Omicron, you know, Omicron uh, has, has reintroduced the marketplace for all of our recreational, outdoor, cruise lines, all that shit. Might be time to finally watch these guys. They might be in a place to finally, finally rotate the situation that's had been happening to them this entire time. But Disney, as being where Pelosi put her money, I definitely keep eyes on this, having dumped to a previous high where he is. He's in a technically interesting fucking place, right? I'm not saying that this is the guy to go for, but Pelosi don't really lose, so. The Pelosi, yeah, it's the Pelosi-Woods ratio. That's what we're playing right now. I'll, I'll take Pelosi over fucking Kathy Big Penis any day of the fucking week. That's a good way to call don't it. Don't short Nancy. Don't, don't short, short Nancy. 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 Nancy's that legitimate bitch. Nancy is legitimately grandma, and she is legitimately that bitch. <laughs> so, like, you know, you can't fuck with her. She's the original grandma. She's the OG, OG. real deal fucking grandma. So, um, all right, let's cover cryptos and see where shit's at there. There's hmm? an interesting question from, from my brother in the chat. Where? What's your question? He said, been having trouble finding what resolution I'm in when I'm looking at a chart and planning trades. I took some trades where I thought I was entering at a three hour, but after going back and reviewing the trades, I was actually entering on a much lower time frame. Any tips on the, how the mechanics of how to find what time resolution you're in? Yeah, you're going to learn all about that in church. So there are some things to teach you first before I can make that an easy thing for you. But yes, definitely, you know, Trend resolution is probably the hardest thing, right? Because price is fractal. It looks the same in every resolution. Then it becomes hard to tell like what you're looking at if you don't have the ability to contextualize price properly. So that's something in church that we actually train you on how to do, and you'll be able to you'll be able to see all of that when we start church next year. So on that note, another question, Alexander underscore Rostov. Kaz, what are your thoughts and experiences about trying to automate your trading system once you develop a, a set of rules? It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't. Um, so to automate a system. So, okay. Well, you know, you guys have seen a million people come up with trading bots and try to sell you like the trading bot that would make you money. If there was one bot that had a set of rules that would work, it would become prolific in moments, right? It's kind of like how Ponzi schemes work. Everyone finds out somebody's making crazy money in something. Everyone shows up. If there was one bot that had this down that anyway coded, that fucking did that and was selling it, everyone would find out about it. So the reality is no one's got that buy. One of the reasons is, is because price being fractal like it is, um, doesn't adhere to uh, 
the hard and fast look back periods of most of the systems that people try to create. Most people do not understand that price itself is expanding and contracting dynamically through time frames. So rigid look back periods, no matter how many you know overlappings you try to create, will go out of phase at some point and you'll get killed while it's out of phase and then it'll come back in alignment. You'd be like, I, I, you know, it works most of the time. Um, it makes sense if you have the rules uh, within your system that um, adapt to that reality in the marketplace and aren't just built on something like a 14 period RSI or, you know, um, a, a 12, 26 MACD or something that's you know ridiculous like that. Um, the kind of rules that you have to have to make it make sense to automate is probably a better question, you know, not just would you automate it. Did we have Supreme Being back in the chat? What just, who'd you have to ban? Yes, yeah, so, so Supreme Being, while we are talking, just sent in an unbanned request form, so I approved it. And he asked, am I famous now? Oh my God. <laughs> you didn't? Yeah, he's in the chat. Oh, you didn't ban him. She's not banned. He's back? Yeah, I haven't banned him. Okay, so if he's there, Supreme Being, do you understand what's going on with that level? Let's see if he's uh, not too mad today to, to have some introspection on this. And then it would probably be a good teachable moment. So most people don't understand what happened in that conversation to understand how it turned to such an important swing level. But it's a teachable moment if you actually recognize now that, you know, no one is really being an asshat. You kind of just had an emotional reaction to what I said. Because I said things the way they need to be said for you to understand something specific. Um, not so much that it was said the way you want it to be said, just how it needs to be said. See if he pops up and let me know. Yeah. Um, so, okay, so we... Huh? I said I'll let you know if he, if he says something. I'm not saying. Oh, do you have to do that in the Uh, yeah, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to touch on something for, um... Well, yeah, I think I'll just do that. I'm going to run out of time. Let me just finish the math yeah. I'm doing. So, let's do crypto math real quick. Uh, so let's go BTC, talking about him last week, uh, well actually two days ago. This corrective structure is about where it's supposed to be. We're talking about him holding higher than this wave to really maintain the uptrend he's got. So, so far it seems to be contouring pretty good, um, you know what we said. And we want to see if he pumps out of this while respecting this shock wave, while respecting this climax low. Um, let it do its thing first. What's up? Your screen. Oh, ha ha ha. My bad. All right, do that again. Climax low, bull flag, first attempted recoil, possibly a corrective structure, and then again. So he's kind of mapped out this, uh, he's followed this map out pretty well, but not really left the range. So, you know, markets are kind of still sitting there. We're going to see what happens over New Year's Eve, uh, New Year's Day, if it has any movement. This is the east projection on the bottom angle that you know is parallel to the top angle. And you can see the bottom angle of the flag itself kind of tracking along this diagonal. So, so far, it looks like it's just building a flag of a much bigger resolution at this point. This climax low is still your key for all of these crypto assets right here to hold, right? So anything here is potentially a higher floor for him to go bouncing out of here if he's going to do it. Total, same structure, slightly better. So he kind of looks like, you know, he's more showing that possibility more so than, um, than ETH is at the moment. ETH is a bit of a laggard. Uh, what chart am I on here? I think there's a huge delay today. Yeah. There is, right? Yeah, I'm seeing that. Uh, what's that see? Litecoin, we showed you to watch this. Litecoin, right? That granny smoking, granny tax level is fucking money. Is the stream frozen? It's having some difficulty today. It's, I, it's, it's working for me right now, but I actually it keeps pausing. I'm not sure if it's my end or your end. Are you guys all, is everyone having that problem? I think so. I know it was glitching a bit earlier. I thought it was just me and I asked, but uh, Jester told me as well that it was on his end. People said my viewers went from 288 to 219. They're getting a lot of latency slowdowns. I don't see anything that is telling me that. I, I turned off my Wi-Fi. I'm like watching it on my phone, my data, just to not um, get in the way of anything, I guess. That wouldn't do anything. Okay. So are you seeing it on your phone look normal or what? Uh, well, it, it's frozen a bit for me. Uh, it, it just does weird stuff. It comes back. 
Refreshing works. I want to refresh your shit real quick and see if you can get it back normal. All G now. Stream lagging for me. Good now. Now you're good for me. That sucks. Yeah, people. yeah this <laughs> keep thing just keep going because it just keeps doing it randomly, so. Yeah, it must be Twitch side. That sucks. You think the whole thing's recorded that way? Um, you... No, it'll, it'll be recorded correctly. Yeah. All right. It should play properly when you guys have to play it back. I guess it's a Twitch thing, but it doesn't show me having any bandwidth issues on my end over here. Uh, that blows. I hate doing charts and knowing that. That sucks. I mean, um, since it's still watchable, so it's not it's not terrible. Uh, Joe said try lowering my resolution and it helps. So is that my end then, or what the fuck? I don't know. I think it's your end. Twitch. Okay. Yeah. All right. So let me try to finish this, guys. Um, so LTC, we talked about paying attention to the, the granny pack level down here. Granny pack held to a point, and so that's still intact. And so you're really just kind of waiting to see if this guy can rotate. He's really just doing horse shit again, and so we have to see if this is going to turn around or, or what the fuck, you know, where we're going to rotate. But we're pretty much in the same place, wait and see mode right now in the trenches uh, on crypto. BTC, like we talked about. God damn it, wrong track. Uh, BTC right here. ETH, total, LTC, all in key spots to watch. We clear granny packs level. We break down through this. ETH rolls. You're probably getting a de-risking to the front of the year. But it, otherwise, if these levels intact, we're in a good position for these flags to rotate and possibly go through here and set up entries above or previous high or trigger. Um, so that is crypto things. Check a couple of these guys. Well, BNB. That's not a chart for BNB. Where's BNB's chart? Is that a BNB chart? I guess so. Okay. I haven't updated in a while. This is a bull flag we had a projection for. We never came out of it. So we can just redraw this guy. All right. Everyone's got that total fucking flag in it. See this high right here? Something like that for him. He said Twitch didn't like the white people talk. <laughs> they tapped my stream. <laughs> Could be right. All right. Desmatron, how do you use levels? Like, what do you do? What? Desmatron, you've been you've been here a long time to ask that question. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, he talks about it regularly on the show and has more in-depth explanation on OnlyFans. But he definitely talks about it, like, regularly on the show. Yeah, so, so Desmond trying to have you watch the training video on OnlyFans because we totally talk about what to do a level in the training video on OnlyFans. Go uh, on the perspective scorecard that Roth posted and go through that whole thing. Right. Step by step. It says it on there too. They, they've written it a million times. Their Ber burger literally has it on here. Follow this. It'll tell you everything you need. But the worst case scenario is, right, the levels that I have are extraordinarily precise. So, I don't know. Follow the trend with the so, level. Support like. support much? I don't know. <laughs> like <laughs> let it establish itself much. So you know, we say on a regular key swing basis. levels, key ranges. I don't know. I thought it made it pretty straightforward. Um Do you guys have these levels, right? Let's see, where's my ETH chart for this? Alright. Do you guys not know to do these levels? Pretty straightforward, right? I gave you crazy uh, levels to make plans around. You can make plans on every level. There are resi key resistance and support levels. But yeah, if you have to ask that question right now, being here for as long as you have, you have to go back and rewatch OnlyFans because that's definitely fully explained in uh, in the three and four training video. Take a breather and sit there and just focus. Right, just focus because I, I definitely laid out information. You shouldn't have to ask those questions if you're around the ETH at all. Um, 
So I've had minimal time. It's 922. Yep. Um, market's gonna open. I probably really should do symbols um, for There's you guys. There's only like four symbols. So, so drop some symbols. Whoever has the symbols, drop them real quick. I'll do them fast as fuck. Let's go, go, go. Um, nobody should be rushing for the bell, I don't think, on a fucking uh, Christmas, uh, uh, a New Year's Eve. So I can get them done. Oh, Desmond Chan is thinking of new people. Okay, I was going to say, so, right, well, we explained that. Sitting on the couch. Huh? Is that like his friend sitting on the couch with the new people? I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so do we have any way to write down symbols? Uh, yeah, just for now, boom. Oh, did you post them already? Not yet, but I see. Somebody has them. Okay, there you go. There you go. Eli Lilly. Drug stocks. Drug stocks and healthcare stuff. Those look good. Um, do we not have a chart for Eli? Guess not. Uh, so that's a bull. That's a fucking hell of an arc, right? You can see that. Ray picking up speed, so pay attention to that, right? You want to see that he maintains uh, that arc. Yeah, it's pretty steep. So with him being like that, it's the kind of thing you want to be safe, but safer than sorry. Um, how I see him kind of like do something on top of this without being through this area. What's that? I just, I just got a DM from Supreme Being. He said, no. yes, sir, did I miss something? Had a phone call. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> the Supreme Being phone call. He, he, missed, uh, he missed the entire part we're talking to him. Okay, that's all right. Mm -hmm. Time to rewatch the show and then come back and talk to us next one. Timing things. All right, so. Come back not this Monday. Come back not this Monday. So this is MGM. Somebody's after MGM. Uh, MGM here, we had a big fight. Let's go redraw some stuff on this guy. So, might be worth watching, right? These are gonna be part of the guys that are social boom. If Omicron is fucking, you know, putting uh, COVID behind us, then casinos that require people is going to be one of those guys to pay attention to, right? So, huge dump right now. You might be watching this right here to see if you can just rotate it off of here and come back with top, over top of this and then give you some kind of structure, hopefully like, you know, up here and then leave out of that. So I think casinos are worth paying attention to. If uh, we're, you know, if Disney's worth paying attention to, then casinos are worth paying attention to. You know, and they're kind of in the same space. So this is the corrective projection for Caesars. Remember it? Told you he could take a while to go sideways, but right now he held the box range. Right, that should be where he holds to have a chance to go back up here. So I think if you look at this guy right now, that pullback low right there, this is slightly higher. So if he can head back up here, that this would be in good shape. And this is the same move that we see right here with fucking MGM, isn't it? Yeah, it's the same spot. So I think those guys look interesting. Let's see if Disney matches that. Not really. Um, SeaWorld. SeaWorld has it. And he's sitting in a good spot, right? Another guy for theme parks, full fucking capacity. That guy looks good. SeaWorld. Um, Six Flags. Six Flags has it. See that? That's what you call about correlated assets, right? Like all that crypto. These guys are all related to the same thing. So people's perceptions around all these things are similar. So structurally, they look alike. That's pretty good to see right there. Let's see, Six Flags. Oh, wow, that's like the least straight line I've ever made. Jesus Christ. Here it comes. Fuck face. So definitely don't want to see him go through that. That would be a bad thing. Six Flags one of the weaker dudes in there. And good swing level is going to be. Go to that channel. I'm doing another poll. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to finish up here before 9.30, Val. Let's see. Uh, where did all my shit just go off the screen? CUV. What is that? Is that... ASX, okay. Uh, wow.
lot. That's a fucking god awful looking chart. That's tedious. So did make it back here. Treat this like a two B. Treat this like the second version of the same thing, right? One is fast, one is slower, but they're the same thing. So he needs to stabilize over this specific level. I would say that he has a chance of finding support in the range of this bull flag, but he's gonna probably be structurally safer to fuck with if he blows these motherfuckers out and hits that one, and then managed to rotate back that way, right? That would probably be a place to play him. I think he'd be safer down there, be held down there. So that's one place that's interesting. And then up here, obviously, if he's against this level, box range is up here and set something up to go out of this. He'd be interesting above that also. 928 BTC dominance. All right, my bad. Right out of time, BTC dominance, BTC dot C. So you watch this, you're still watching this range right here, right? Pay attention if BTC can go through the floor or not and stays just BTC dominant tide. That would be very important to watch. Otherwise, you're waiting for a potential rotation. If you're gonna get an alt cycle, then you're gonna get a rotation from this bull flag right here, making this the low, the low floor we're talking about. That's just not drawn well. It's just, if you're watching to see if this floor can hold on on BTC, if he does, he can rotate the bull flag. If he rotates the bull flag, he's going to have a crypto versus BTC tide. If he breaks the floor, crypto and the dollar stays any bit strong on them, you might have crypto de-risk across the board. So this is a pretty interesting spot, I think, for where he's building down to, to pay attention and see what he does right here. Here is decision point in BTC dominance. Um, HNT USD. Don't know what this is. HNT, pretty structured Ponzi pump, looks like, for crypto things. So, Ponzi Nomics at play here. It looks pretty good, right? Came through this shit, arced up like that. This arc looks pretty huge, but I think you pretty much look at him like this. He's attempting to rotate that, so, you know, might be worth paying attention to if he actually figures out how to come out of this a little bit better. HNT and then XMR, USDT. Pretty sure I have XMR somewhere with stuff on it. Ding, ding, ding. Ding, ding, ding. Market's open. I got to get off of here. So this is OG fucking, this is the OG, OG XMR chart from 2017 that's been evolved uh, for quite a ways. This was actually a projection last year with ETH that we told you about before everything went crazy. So he's come out of it. One of the key levels here, old high here, bounced on climax. You're watching this shape right here. Ding, ding. Market's open. You're looking for this to hold while this old trigger stays intact. All right, guys, market's open. Got to wrap it right there. Thanks for joining me for the, the uh, New Year's Eve show, Director Vale and Burgernomics. Um, for everybody that's uh, been to here from the beginning to the end, we appreciate you. For newcomers, we appreciate you guys. Make sure you check out that beginner's list burger pin to Reddit. Go to those videos. Every question you have about, like, you know, levels, risk management, targeting, um, staying with plays that you're right on, you know, evolving your strategies if you're having problems and how to do that is in those training videos and OnlyFans. So um, for everybody new and old, we appreciate you guys. Congrats on, a, I think, a great 2021 for the Winter Nautilus TV Eco and for everybody that's uh, been here learning along the way. So we'll catch you on the next one. Peace out. Peace out. Bye. Also, Leon won the best level of the year. <laughs> Leon won best level of the year? That's what's up. Leon's, Leon's a celebrity. Sorry, Supreme Being. Bad luck next year. <laughs> <laughs>
I never miss symbols, motherfucker. Here's Microsoft. <laughs> Microsoft. Supreme Being. Oh, we put Supreme Being on Microsoft. Look at him. He's fucking Microsoft right in this fucking yin yang. Good, oh su good swing level. Yin yang level. Supreme, AKA Supreme Being. You guys knew I'd just fucking come back. The fucking dog already ran. What the fuck? <laughs> so, game over, man. Game over, man. So this guy really fits in. This guy down here really fits in down here at the double bottom. And you're waiting for this guy above to fucking cannon blast out. If the market proceeds higher next year, probably see a swing through Supreme Being. All right, now we're done. Peace out, motherfuckers. <laughs> Welcome to Wintronomics TV. Your stream will begin shortly. Loading in five. Welcome to Wintronomics TV. Your stream will begin shortly.